I'd like to thank you for watching this video and hopefully it helps you out in doing the P2V or V2V process. You might have seen some of my other videos. I appreciate you watching those and I like putting those out there for you. As uh, FYI, if there's no audio, generally it's because I've performed that uh, how-to video while on a customer site. Any of them that have audio, such as this one, I've done within our lab environment. Now as you can see, I have Zen Convert already downloaded onto the desktop of a virtual machine. This is actually a Zen server virtual machine. Now given that it's a uh, Windows 7 and the Zen Convert, the uh, latest one is going to require a .NET 4.0 installation. So you'll want to actually have this installed prior to installing your Zen Convert. I'm going to go ahead and do that and pause this video here for a moment while that happens. Okay, now I have uh, .NET 4.0 installed, and as we can see, installation is completed and successful. We're going to go ahead and run our Zen Convert installer. You'll see this is pretty straightforward. A lot of prompts, but just really nice wizard driven and pretty easy to select. And I decided to keep the video running while I'm doing this. Doesn't really take too much time. So now we have uh, Zen Convert installed with .NET 4.0. And here we have it. Let's go ahead and kick this thing off. So as we can see, this is a Windows 7 template VM uh, on a Zen server. And so here we're going to be choosing our target, um, our source and destination for the whole workload. So um, we can direct this to a Zen server. We can also do Zen server virtual hard disk, VHD. You can also do the OVF standardization open package for mobility to be able to transfer it between all your major hypervisors. So this does not have to be done on a Zen server VM only. It can be done on any other VM as well as a virtual machine. And then Citrix also has a provisioning services VDesk. We are not going to go into this on the Zen Convert. Now, first off, um, you would have display of all your disks, physical or even VDesks, on the VM itself or your physical machine. Obviously, this VM only has one. But if you had like a data disk, you would use this drop down here to select that data disk and then you'd see use space versus free space. And all of us in the virtual world know that that's a lot of white spacing at times. So now that we don't have anything but our source being one VDesk or one physical desk, we're gonna look at our destination here as well. So we look at the used and our free space, the free space being white spacing. We can actually go up or we can go down with this free spacing. So we do not have to have this large of a drive or we can set a much larger drive at this time and point. Giving it a larger capacity, taking it from 24 gigs to 28 gigs. is that simple in the P2V process. However, I do not recommend doing this. This can cause issues. Best way to actually do this to a virtual machine is to actually take the virtual machine in your disk management is where you're going to manage any other uh, expanding or shrinking of volumes or if it is a virtual machine and you would like to add more disk space to the actual volume that you're working with you can do so there obviously you're going to reboot come back up into it and you're going to change the size of the actual disk so just for this we are going to set this back to the default 24 gigs now you also have a summary down below here it's going to show capacity unallocated space and so forth just click next host name is obviously your hypervisor now on the Zen server side I'm going to actually set up 
the host now to one of our host servers, one of our Zen servers. Well, now that I have that information in there, workspace is what we'll work with, and that's where you're actually going to have a temporary deposit, if you will, of the actual VM, whether it be a VHD or an XVA or OVF, prior to mounting that to a host. So we're going to actually browse for a workspace. Previously, we were using 13 gigs out of 24 gigs with 11 gigs left on the C drive. So, really doesn't give the spacing of that size of a VDES to be placed on the C drive. So, this is where the considerations come into play. Either one, you can create a new network drive and then select it here in the drop down, or we can mount another VDISC to this VM itself and select that. One, if you also place the, the P2V process and the temp in this workspace, if you place this onto another drive, that's a separate spindle, so you're also isolating IOPS as well, which makes the P2V process or V2V process faster. Now granted, if you're doing a network drive, that's traffic going across your network, so just keep that in consideration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this process, and I'll come back into here and I'll have given this virtual machine a second disk, a D drive or E drive actually in this instance. So we'll be right back. Okay, I'll pick up where I left off with adding the new drive or giving it another spindle since it's a VM. So this is another V disk, made it 15 gigs, so that way we have enough for our destination in our workspace. So we're going to go ahead and start Zen Convert again. Same considerations here. And now you see the new volume that I actually added, 15 gigs, and the free space, as well as our destination volumes. But what I don't want to do since this is kind of an empty disk and I just want to do the C drive, I'm going to unselect the E, the new volume that I did. Now we can see that our P to V summary is showing 24 gig V disk to this 15 gig. So I'm going to cut that space down to Okay, we have this summary now, and you can see I'm actually killing a lot of this free space here and only taking that 13 gigs out of the drive itself, what's being actually used, plus a little bit of space. Select next, host name, Now we're going to browse to the workspace itself. Just going to call this V to V for virtual to virtual. And then we're testing the credentials. Once that's done, we'll proceed. Okay, now all we have to do is give this VM a name. choosing Win7 V2V and tell it which storage repository to go to. As you can see in our test lab we don't have a lot of space but we can complete this. Now here you're going to have the quick summary of the, this is the VM using the C drive as the source to our destination which is our actual SR to the X4 
and showing a status ready. Now, some people like to see uh, log files of conversion processes, or maybe you don't want to see this. Sometimes I've had conversions go through 100% successful, but then they say except for a few things that were not exported. And so having this check mark can actually show you the files or something that wasn't exported at the time. It's entirely up to you. And then select convert. Now depending upon the size of drive, spindle to spindle, from one spindle to the network, and then over to storage repository, it is all determining. So generally, uh, I've had really good luck at a 40 gig V-disk size, taking about 40 minutes to about an hour. Now on a V to V, here's the great thing, or even the physical. The whole time that this is happening, your machine is up running in production during this process. You're going to have a exact copy virtualized in a VHD file, OVF, or XVA for your use into your virtual environment. Drop the box that's uh, up and running, whether it's a physical or virtual that you did the virtualization uh, conversion, and then you're done. Oh, and one last thing too, after the conversion, bringing it up on your hypervisor, at times you may have to do some troubleshooting of drivers. If you've done a physical to a virtual on let's say Dell or even HP, there are drivers that are actually placed or installed into those that may be, um, need to be uninstalled out of your virtual box. Not your source, but your virtual box may have to uninstall those, may blue screen, so you're going to do your typical troubleshooting from that time and point, go safe mode, remove drivers, things of that nature, and then get that up into your virtual environment. So it's not 100%, but I've had a success rate pretty close to about 80% using Zen Convert and the machine just coming up without any issues. Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully this helps you all.